on the previous episode of Dragon Balls, I mean, the Roy Jones breakdown, uh, we talked about chickens and coops. See, y'all don't understand. You don't want to spook the chicken before you get him in the coop. However, at this point right here, he kind of pulls like a strange rooster move, like this like weird backs, back leg springy faint, and his opponent doesn't give too much of a reaction. In fact, he leans in. And the, the previous part, we were talking all about feints and reactions and capitalizing off that. So what he does is, okay, he reads that, and he springs off that back leg just like how he was fainting, steps up, jab up top, cross to the body, boom. And he just barely gets underneath that shot. And, and, when, and when you watch someone like Roy Jones, and we can kind of see this with Floyd Mayweather, like you see these elite athletes like Roy, who's an amazing athlete, and you see him get away with so many crazy techniques and dangerous techniques, risky maneuvers. And then you think about all the people that try to emulate that. You're like, you know, so many people got sent to the shadow realm trying to box like Roy Jones. And at a certain, after a while, he got sent to the shadow realm, but that he that's what happens when you fight the best. You go up and down and weigh stuff like that. So I can't blame Roy for that. But then you got people trying to copy Floyd Mayweather. They don't know how to do the Philly show and they get, we don't gotta go there. It's been a little while since we did a little bit of if then science, cause and effect. Roy is looking for a specific if. That if, that scenario, that specific scenario is if Kelly comes forward. And let's look at what the then is. So if Kelly comes forward and he has to make that happen with these jabs to the, again, he's not even trying to land. He's just trying to probe at, at Kelly to get him to open up and come forward. So if Kelly comes forward, then, boom. Dragon Ball Z, then Roy can time his entry with a jab. Even Roy's feints, and this is a compliment by the way, even his feints are kind of like a wild animal. And I, and I mean that in the most respectful way, like they're unpredictable and explosive and you're like, what the hell is going on? I think it's, I think those type of feints are actually some of the best feints because it's, it's insane. And for Kelly, he's like, what the hell is going on? It's like a, a bear doing a mock charge. And so, the important thing about these feints though is look at where Kelly starts. Center of the ring, a lot of territory, which is something we're gonna talk about for the next few seconds. A lot of territory, he gets backed up by the first feint, less room to maneuver as much as he had before. And then another feint, well actually no, this one isn't a feint, that's what I mean. His face is so good that they fooling me and I already watched this. That feint, where he did that little weird move, turns into a left hook to the body and then notice where Kelly ends up, uh oh absolutely very little territory now and when, when i talk about territory basically i mean uh like his back is against the ropes so as far as the ring goes how much space do you have to do what you want to do if you have very little space to do what you want to do you have very little territory if your opponent if your opponent can move left move right move forward move back they, they have a lot of territory if you can only either move forward or move to your sides but you're kind of like trapped and you don't have too many options like how Kelly has right now. It would be different if he was in a corner and didn't even have almost absolutely no territory. His back is against the rope, so he has far less territory. So Kelly technically has three options, but they're all quite dangerous options, especially two of them. Um, he, can't, he can't go backwards, so that piece of territory is removed, that option. However, he can go forward, he can go right, he can go left. The problem with going forward is, is that that's exactly what Roy wants, is he's proven several times. The problem with going to the right is that he's circling into Roy's power hand. And even the slight problem with the left is Roy has that fast left hook. So there's so many landmines in all the directions that he has available. Whereas Kelly was more safe when he was able to move backwards, but he lost too much territory. So no, he can't do that. He's out of options. And so they're standing in front of each other and Roy is doing all these feints and Kelly is like highly reactive. He's like, he's waiting for something to happen. And then he does a good move here. A dangerous move, but a good move. He advances, he reclaims some territory and Roy actually backs up. But Roy, again, a tricky, oof, tricky dude. So he does this weird level change and gets a reaction out of Kelly. But then he, he, he in broken rhythm, it's, it's a lot easier to see in, in full speed. In broken rhythm, first of all, he just did a level change faint right here. The, I always say this, I said this about Israel Adesanya, who's like a perfect example of this. Um, Ino Uwe, Lomachenko, like all the top guys. If you look at some of the best feinters in striking, a lot of times what they do is they faint 
the type of shot that they're gonna throw bef right before they throw it. Like they set it up with a fake, boom, level change, faint. And then he gets back up. And then the next shot he does after he gets backed up, it's a level change. And then he breaks the rhythm. It's like a offbeat cross that comes over top of the level change. It's, it's, it's a lot going on there. Then also from this range, Kelly probably feels he's out of range and technically he is. And he even backs up because he reclaims some territory so he could back up. But Roy does a little bit of a Superman punch. It's not technically a Superman punch like an MMA, but since it came from Roy, it is technically a Superman punch also. Once they get reset, Kelly has a lot more territory to work, move back, move side to side, a lot more options. So he's gonna, he's not gonna take advantage, he's not gonna not take advantage of that by just standing there and doing nothing. He's gonna try and get to Roy, get his respect, steps in with the jab, Roy steps back, and then he tries to follow up with the cross. And if you see Roy, he just barely gets away. He might even get barely grazed by that punch because he's a master of the game of inches and distance and stuff like that. So right hand just barely touches him and he comes over top with the left hook. And if he if he had hair, that would have been a taper, but since he's bald, it, it, that's not what it was. We got another situation where they're in the center of the ring. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of neutral territory, pretty even amount of territory between them. They can they can maneuver in whatever way they see fit, both of them. But then you see Roy start fainting. One faint backs him up a little bit. Steps forward, another faint backs him up a little bit. Well, not, not a little bit, he jumped back because he, he got hit with that cross earlier. And then look at the territory he's losing. He's slowly getting cornered. He's slowly losing options for, for movements and maneuvers. So now that he's getting backed up, he stops. He stands his ground and he starts fainting. And he gets Roy Jones to back a little bit. He starts advancing just barely. He's tentatively advancing because he's been getting, he's been getting grazed by these anime shots from Roy, these fast ass shots. So even when Roy faints the next time, he doesn't back up. He stands his ground with that interesting high guard. He stands his ground, he continues advancing, then he steps in with a jab. And of course, Roy, he's like, Roy has the reflexes of a house cat on caffeine. So he just barely turns away from it. And one thing that's important to acknowledge, although I do have my slight critiques of, of Kelly's technique, but it's different when you're in there. Everybody has a plan until so on and so forth, as we said so many times. When you're dealing with uh, all time great fighters, and it's different when you watch them, but if you're in there, it's not just that they have a mastery of deception or mastery of the game of inches or a mastery of the if then science. They have a mastery of everything like Roy. He knows how to set stuff up, cause and effect. He knows how to deceive his opponent with feints and positional changes. He knows how to properly calculate range so he can just barely get out of the way of shots and, uh, uh, and subsequently set up his own. We've seen that a few times with just about everything we described here. And we've seen just about Every time he defends himself, actually, when he, you know, all, almost all his defensive maneuvers have been just him or doing. Them. So, yeah, fighting someone with maxed out stats can make anyone look bad in the net. Like if you see people fight Mike Tyson, they don't they, they don't look like the best version of themselves. Normally, it's different when you're in there with somebody it's just a freak of nature. Like I said, fighting someone with maxed out stats can make anyone look bad. In the next part, I want to explore a very specific concept or, or maybe I would dedicate an entire video to that. Hmm. We'll see. Up next, my system for judging chins. Look out for that in a couple hours.